What's this? A card? That's right. It's a card from the official Kingdom Hearts trading card game. Hey there. I'm KH Guides, and I manage KHGuides.com, where I'm working to build the best guides, walkthroughs, and tutorials for the Kingdom Hearts series. Up to this point, the KH Guides YouTube channel has exclusively featured tutorials for the Kingdom Hearts games, but I've always wanted to produce video essays covering broader topics across the Kingdom Hearts franchise. So welcome to our very first video essay. Let's take a deep dive into one of my favorite lesser known properties in the series. The Kingdom Hearts trading card game was produced and published by Japanese entertainment company Tomy near the end of 2004 to coincide with the Japanese release of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories for the Game Boy Advance. An English version of the TCG was released about three years later by American game company Fantasy Flight Games. Tomy released a total of seven card sets in Japan, while Fantasy Flight Games only released the first four sets internationally. The base set? A Darkness Awakened and Light and Darkness set featured characters from Kingdom Hearts 1 and all shared the same standard card layout. The sets including and after Break of Dawn featured characters from Kingdom Hearts 2 and an updated card layout. The publisher used Square Enix key art and concept art for characters exclusive to the Kingdom Hearts series, while the Disney character cards feature licensed promotional art produced by the Walt Disney Company. The cards were sold in a variety of formats, including booster packs, booster boxes, and starter decks. The cards included in these sets were assigned four levels of rarity, common, uncommon, rare, and super rare foil cards. There were also standalone promotional cards released before and after the full sets. Each card has an assigned type with specific uses during standard play. We're going to cover how to play against an opponent using cards in the Kingdom Hearts TCG base set. There are two ways to win the Kingdom Hearts trading card game. Your first option is to travel the worlds until the combined level of all your world cards is 13 or greater. The second option is to win challenges against your opponent's player card until their heart points reach zero. To get started, both players set their player card on the mat and move their heart points counter to match the number on their player card. They shuffle their decks, place them on the mat, and draw six cards each. The player with the lowest level on their player card takes the first turn. Each player's turn consists of four phases. In the draw phase, the player draws cards from their deck until they have six in their hand. Next is the action phase, where you can take several different actions in any order. The first option is to move to another world by playing a world card from your hand. Playing a world card earns you one heart point, but you can only play one world card per turn. When the player's combined levels on played world cards is 13 or greater, that player wins the game. The second option in the action phase is to play a dark card on your opponent's world card. Your opponent can't play another world card until they defeat the dark cards you place there. The number of dark cards you can play on a world is determined by the world card's level. So in this case, you can only place two dark cards in Agrabah. And each dark card's level can't be more than the combined level of your opponent's world cards. You can't place this pirate card yet, but you can place this sea neon instead. Your third option in the action phase is to battle any dark cards that your opponent has placed on your world card. You can only battle once per turn. If your player card's attack value is equal to or greater than the dark card's power value, the dark card is defeated and moved to your opponent's discard pile. If your attack value is less than the dark card's power value, you can play attack cards from your hand to boost your player's attack value for this battle only. Playing multiple attack cards of the same name often grants you bonus attack power. Any used attack cards are discarded after the battle. Your fourth option in the action phase is to play friend cards on the mat. These cards can be used to boost your attack value during battles against dark cards and challenges in the next phase and they're only discarded after they've been used once. You can place as many friend cards from your hand as you like on the mat, but only if the friend card's level is at most one level higher than any other friend cards in play. So at this point, you can't play this aerial card until you place a level two friend card first. You also can't play two friend cards with the same name. You'll need to discard the friend card currently in play to place the desired friend card from your hand. Your final option in the action phase is to play a magic card. 
You can play as many magic cards as you want in a single turn, as long as its level does not exceed the magic value on your player card or any friend card in play. There are also magic friend cards. These are played in the same area as standard friend cards and can be used to assist in battles against dark cards or challenges. Some magic friend cards have special abilities that take effect when you use them. They have to be discarded at the end of your turn regardless of whether you use them or not, so if you place one on the mat, make sure you use it before your turn ends. Next up is the challenge phase, where you can choose to attack your opponent's player card with your own. If you choose to challenge, both players move their player card to the center and take turns boosting their player cards with one friend card or magic friend card on the mat, one magic card, and any number of attack cards from their hand. When both players choose to take no further action, the attack values are added up and compared. The player with the lower total attack value loses one heart point. The final phase is the discard phase, where you can discard as many cards from your hand as you wish. And you must discard any magic friend cards that you have placed on the mat, regardless of whether they were used during this turn or not. And that's the end of your turn. Players take turns moving through these phases until a player's world card level totals up to 13 or a player's heart points reach zero. That just about covers the basics for the Kingdom Hearts trading card game. The later TCG sets expanded these rules and introduced additional card types. Click the link in the video description or here in the video to view the latest version of the official rulebook for the game. If you're interested in collecting these cards or building a deck to play with, the Kingdom Hearts TCG has been out of print for a good while, so availability is somewhat limited. At the time of this video, the best options for finding cards or sealed products are auction sites like eBay and other online third-party resellers. There's also an active Facebook group that collectors use to sell extra cards and sealed items. We placed a link in the video description to this group. If you're looking to have cards graded, be aware that the English set produced by Fantasy Flight Games doesn't have the greatest print quality. You'll find lots of cards in these sets have imperfect centering. Sealed base set packs typically sell between $30 and $50, while booster boxes sell anywhere between $300 and $700. Individual card prices typically vary by their rarity and condition. Several very rare cards can fetch hundreds of dollars, like the Ultima Weapon Attack card and the King and Sephiroth Friend cards. One of my personal favorites is this prototype card that only features a white X on the front and the standard artwork on the back. The last registered sale of one of these cards was listed for $900, but it seems the seller took a best offer that was likely less than that. Regardless, this was the last known sale of this card in years as far as I could find. There was also a rare certification card awarded to those who participated in the official Kingdom Hearts TCG tournament held in Japan. If you want to see more info about the TCG, the Cage Guides website has been updated with a new section featuring game rules and a complete list of images and individual stats for every known card. I hope you enjoyed this dive into a somewhat forgotten piece of Kingdom Hearts history. This video was produced as part of the March Capri Celebration. It's a fantastic event organized by the online community to celebrate the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Find out more at MarchCaprice.com. Thanks to our guiding lights and shining beacons on Patreon for their support. You can join us on Patreon to receive lots of community perks including early access to future videos. You can also find me live streaming on Twitch as I continue work on the website and other Kingdom Hearts projects. And as always, you can find the best guides and walkthroughs to the Kingdom Hearts series at khguides.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.